Okay, so welcome to tonight's show. Change the screen for just a second. My name is Ken Edmonds, and if, if we're meeting for the first time on this channel, I share information uh, for individuals that travel with disabilities and their friends and families. I try to help them travel better uh, and enjoy their trips more, and where I can, help them save a little bit of money along the way. Right. Uh, we're going to be talking about the best itineraries of Alaska, and we're going to be talking about the best itineraries of Alaska, and we're going the sound is all messed up. Yeah, hold on a second, Murray. Do uh, you, have, you have YouTube open by any chance? The sound is all messed up. Yeah, hold on a second, Murray. Do uh, you, have, you have YouTube? Okay, Murray, I just muted your mic. Do you have YouTube open by any chance on your... Or Facebook Live. I'm taking a quick chance scan through mine. That's usually what what triggers that. Anyway, I'm gonna leave you muted for a minute, Murray, and then I can uh, I can switch back and forth. Hi, Pam. How are you tonight? Um. Anyway, so I think that we're going to have with us tonight uh, a real expert, Murray Lundberg. He has been uh, a tour guide. A, he's uh, been a speaker on the cruise ships, and he lives in uh, the Yukon Territory. So he knows his way around Alaska. He's going to share with us some of his adventures and some of the things that have been, um, you know, his advice. So let me introduce Murray, and we'll give him a shot to, to talk to us here. I'm on screen, and I'll unmute you, Mary. Okay. Good night, Ken. It's uh, nice to see you again. Uh, thanks for inviting me back. These things are always fun. Um, I uh, at least if I uh, can't cruise Alaska for real right now, I can uh, get on here and talk about it. So I've done uh, 13 cruises. I uh, I drove uh, motor coaches that were tied into cruises for 23 years. And then I've been on 13 Alaska cruises, mostly as a speaker on the ships, either as destination speaker or um, the actual onboard naturalist. So I've sort of, um, um, you know, been around most of the, uh, the cruise lines, uh, and I always keep an eye on what itineraries are going on. So I spent three hours this afternoon having a look at the new itineraries and seeing what ships are operating. Um, I've got my... Uh, uh, old time favorite ships for various reasons. Uh, the Radiance of the Seas was the ship that got Kathy and I into cruising. We uh, got invited to to speak on the show. I got invited to speak on the Radiance in 2008. And Kathy and I said, I don't know, you know, we're not really a cruise ship kind of people. We're more, you know, throw a tent in the back of the canoe and we'll go wandering that way. But about halfway up the gangplank to the Radiance, we said, hmm, this may be okay. <laughs> And then the, the Amsterdam, uh, Kathy and I got engaged uh, as the Amsterdam sail away from Ketchikan. So we've got our, uh, you know, ships that have our, our soft spots for. Sorry about that. I had me muted for a minute. Um, and, and I think we're all that way. We, uh, you know, our first cruise is one of those things that stays with us. Now, my, it's kind of interesting. My first cruise was a sample. Like I was a travel agent at the time. And I had a one-day cruise on the um, on the carnival. Um, it was the holiday, and then uh, after that, I had a uh, uh, like a one-night cruise on Royal Caribbean and a couple of short ones. But my first seven-day was on the Spirit, and we went to Alaska, and that's what got me really hooked on cruising, and that's what really got me hooked on Alaska. Alaska to me is one of those places you go there, you know you're not going anywhere else again. No, I won't say I won't go anywhere else, but I, it's sure far and away my favorite. Um, so let's start. Let me pop up. Let me do this. Put us off to the side. Uh, this um, so this is a, a, a map. We're going to look at a couple of itineraries. 
And this will be a fairly typical uh, Glacier Bay seven-day cruise out of a Seattle round trip. We're stopping in Victoria, and typically Victoria is one of those really short stops late in the evening just so that they can say they stopped there because uh, they have to stop in a foreign port. Um, I like the itinerary uh, that it, in the fact that it goes to Glacier Bay. Um, I, I like Ketchikan. I, I love Juneau. I love Skagway. Uh, your thoughts on this itinerary, Murray? Uh, yeah, I mean, this uh, you know, sort of introduction to Alaska is always great for people who haven't done it before. Uh, all the ports are, are, are excellent. Uh, Victoria is a disappointment to a lot of people because you're not there very long. But again, it's a good introduction. And it's easy to get from Seattle back to Victoria if you decide you want to see more of it. Yeah, I would concur with that. Okay, this was uh, this was on a Norwegian cruise line. They run, and to me, the, um, Murray and I kind of have different opinions, and, and that's the nice thing about our our, our 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 show is we can have different opinions, and it's okay. Um, I think this one short changes you in Alaska pretty bad. It's uh, ten days from Vancouver and winds up in Los Angeles. But you spend uh, like two days or three days from Seattle going down to Los Angeles that I think could be much better spent in uh, Alaska, but I'm, a, I'm very prejudiced about wanting to stay and spend my time in Alaska. Uh, you thought this might be all right because you like the sea days, Murray? Uh, yeah, I like the sea days, but I also like to uh, spend time in the, the Southern port. Uh, Probably the, the best example of that we've done was out of San Francisco. And San Francisco having three days there before the cruise and then 10 days up to Alaska and back to Vancouver was absolutely superb. Yeah, I, and I, I would agree with that. I love San Francisco as a place to visit. It's not a place I want to live, but it's, it's such oh. a cool place to visit. Uh, so I, I would agree with that. Let me pop up. I've got another one here that I liked. This one we did the uh, the reverse of this last year, uh, and it didn't have it didn't have uh, Glacier Bay. It had uh, Sawyer Glacier, but uh, out of Seward we went southbound, and they run this cruise northbound and southbound. Uh, we went out of Seward uh, down to Vancouver, and we really enjoyed that. We had bad weather uh, kind of till we got to after we left Hubbard Glacier. The weather turned off great. We got to go into the in. Um, in Skagway, we went into the into the Yukon Territory, almost as far as where Murray lives. We didn't quite get to Whitehorse. We stopped at the at the Emerald Lake, and and made the turnaround there. But it had Juneau and Ketchikan, and then Vancouver, and uh, we really enjoyed that. Your thoughts on this kind of an itinerary? Uh, we did this cruise uh, three years ago on the Millennium, and then once we got to Seward, we rented a van uh, with two couples that we knew from Ontario and uh, toured up to Denali and back for four days. Again, uh, you know, it's a great way to uh, be able to spend extra time, especially in Alaska, with, get a van or obviously there's lots of cruise options, cruise tour options as well. But uh, once you get used to the place, it's nice to be able to on your, be on your own and make your own itinerary. Yeah, it, it's kind of interesting. I had thought about it um, in, in, I'm working on the travel guide for Alaska and the one thing I think if I had it to do and was going to spend some time in afterwards, I'd run an RV uh, in Alaska because that way you've, you've got the freedom to stop where you, if you find something beautiful to look at, you know, you're not trying to get to some hotel somewhere and you can do your own meals. And I'm kind of partial to fresh fish. So I'd have my fishing rod and, and get to do a little bit of that. Um, you know, the, the other thing for those that, that haven't done it, the train from Seward to Anchorage is just, Absolutely. Yeah, we've and done so, that. Michelle, I got a question here. Let me ask answer this real quick. Do I think ships will be sailing again out of Seward next June? I think so. I I had a I just had um, the oh uh, cat from uh, she's the um, with the visitors bureau in Seward. She was just on you know, and they're very much looking forward to next year to to, to be able to sail. So, I'm sure they're planning on it. Yeah, I was talking to the mayor of Seattle about two hours ago, I mean, of Skagway, and uh, he, you know, they're ramping up for next year. So, you know, keep our fingers crossed, and uh, hopefully 2021 is uh, good enough that this year will be a distant, uh, ugly memory. Yeah. 
Yeah, in fact, I had, I had um, uh, I think it was last Monday. No, not last Monday. Monday before last, I had Cody Jennings. She's from the um, Skagway's Visitor Bureau. She used to work for the White Pass, and now she's with the Visitor's Bureau. And she was a she was a real good guest too. Real interesting to talk to. Okay, so let me pop up another um, itinerary. This one right now, I, this was what I was scheduled on this year as a 10-day. This is a nine-day itinerary. And it does Ketchikan, Juneau, Skagway. It does Glacier Bay. Um, the one I was on also went up and did Hubbard Glacier, which is a little farther north. And it does Sitka. Sitka's a town I've never been to. Like I said, I've been to every other one of those ports. Um but not to Sitka, and I was really looking forward to going this year. Sitka is one of our favorite ports for sure. Um, we, we've only been there twice, um, but we actually had planned on going back to Sitka independently to do uh, the music festival in June. Um, it's just, uh, well, first of all, it's got the most amazing marine wildlife tours anywhere in Alaska. You go out with one of these small boats, like six people, and the the birds and the sea life, uh, you know, sea lions, uh, sea otters, uh, whales, and on and on. It's just amazing there. And yeah, then, and they had the Fortress of the Bear, too. And, absolutely. of course, there's a lot of history because uh, Sitka was where um, they turned uh, Alaska over from Russia to the United States, if my memory serves me. That's right. And so there's a fort there. And so there's just a lot of history there. I, I was able to interview a... Uh, one of the local guides uh, to uh, talk about Sitka this year. So that one, like I said, I would love to, to do that one. Um, but there are some ones that I that get even better. We're kind of going from worst to best, and then we'll start on ships. Um, Princess has a really nice 10-day. And this is exactly the cruise that I, that I had scheduled on the Norwegian Sun last year, or, or this year for September. Actually, it was scheduled for September of this year, and we just didn't get to go. Um, but you get to hit pretty much all the major ports. Uh, you go to Sitka, you do uh, uh, Glacier Bay and Hubbard Glacier, so you get some of the major glacier viewing. Um, your thoughts on this one? Uh, this would be high on my list of ones to do uh, for that combination as well. Sitka, Hubbard Glacier, and Glacier Bay is pretty hard to beat. Uh, a lot of people get fixated on Glacier Bay as the place you got to see, but I don't agree, having been to all of them now. Um, Hubbard Glacier on, on a good day is so incredible, and nothing in Glacier Bay can match the calving, or, or even the size of uh, Hubbard Glacier. It's just so amazing. So this one is absolutely a winner. Yeah, I, it was interesting. When we were in, at Hubbard Glacier, uh, we were there in uh, June a year ago, and it was funny because there was one of uh, one of the adventure sh class ships was had been with us in uh, Seward and left before us, and they were at Hubbard Glacier, and, and they had people that had gotten out and were out there in the water. You know, it was cold, it was raining, and, and you know, in, in kayaks. And I am like, you, you got to be pretty hardcore to want to be out there in a kayak. On a sunny day, I could see it, but in the water, it's still going to be awfully cold. Yeah. Uh, we were on the Radiance uh, many years ago, and as a uh, prize for something the crews had been doing, uh, the crew members, certain, I think it was 100 crew members, got on three lifeboats and went up really close to Glacier, and there was a massive cabbing, and all of a sudden there's this, I don't know, 50-foot-high tsunami coming towards them. The captain must have said, oh, what have I done? I've killed my crew. But they wrote it out. I never did see a video from taking from one of those lifeboats, but it must have been pretty impressive that they wrote it. <laughs> really well. That, well, that was my thought about the calving and the kayak. I am like, yeah, some of those calvings can be pretty big off of Hubbard. Well, uh, six Germans were killed in uh, Valdez, uh, exactly that. The the glacier there uh, calved while they were out there in their little inflatable kayaks, and they were all drowned. Yeah, I, I saw that. Was that that last, was that last year? Uh, two years ago, I think. Two years. Yeah. yeah, I remember reading it, but my sense of time kind of slides by. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's look at this next one. Like I said, they get better. Here's a 12-day that uh, throws in um, Prince Rupert and Victoria to the mix. Uh, I think this would be, um, again, a, another great choice. And, of course, I'm, I'm very much a fan of more. 
I'm like Murray. I like lots of days on the ship. I just like lots of my days on the ship to all be in Alaska. <laughs> you thought Prince Rupert, this one is great. Um, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of Prince Rupert. Uh, there's not a lot to do in Prince Rupert as far as excursions and stuff, but it's just such an incredibly beautiful location. And the sail into Prince Rupert is, is beautiful. It's, it's like Sitka in a lot of ways. You're going through all these little channels and it, it's wonderful. And the museum there, actually, the uh, the First Nations Museum, the Indian Museum, is wonderful. I think that's what we saw when we were there. I was telling Murray before the show started that we visited uh, Prince Rupert back when it was first opening up. This would have been in, oh, probably 2006, 2007, somewhere in that time frame. We were on the Spirit when she first came back. She was had been with Star Cruise Lines in Asia. And when we got to Prince Rupert, they didn't even have a, a gangway on shore. So they had to snake one out of the hold all the way forward on the on the spirit. And then it was so steep that my wife was in her wheelchair and, and they had four officers carried her up and down because uh, they didn't want her trying to walk or trying to, to, to me push it up. But uh, yeah, it was it was enjoy enjoyable and I'd love to go back. Okay, and so this is our last itinerary. This is Holland, Holland America's 14 day. And so this has some unique things about it. Um, it does Homer and Valdez. And then it also does Misty Fjords. Is there another cruise line that does Misty Fjords that you know no, of, Maria? No, uh, it's all small boats that go in there. Th this is really unique. Yeah, so I, I think that would be uh, pretty uh, amazing. And it also does Tracy Arm, it said, so. Uh, it would probably be, um, might be Dawes, or it might be, um, oh, went blank, Murray. What's the other glacier up there? In and, Trace and, 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 you got and Dawes Glacier? Uh, the Sawyer, you mean? Sawyer, yeah, that's what I was thinking about, is it might be Sawyer. I, I didn't look to see. But so the, the interesting thing is there's a lot of different choices when you go to Alaska, and these weren't all of them, but it's kind of interesting that these – these variations that we just looked at encompass pretty much all of the uh, the itineraries. There might, might be some minor variations. Um, I think one of them goes to Haynes instead of Skagway, possibly. But there's, like I said, these are the gen, let's say the general um, itineraries that are available. So we're gonna let Murray talk to us about ships for a while because he's had a lot more experience than I've had. You know, one of the, 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 uh, the neat things about choosing an Alaska cruise is that every cruise line and, for that matter, every ship has its own personality. And it's fun to really get into the details of each ship's personality and see which one suits you the best. Uh, Kathy and I have sort of uh, decided that we like Hall in America and Celebrity the best. Uh, those are the ones we travel the most. And... We used to think that the smaller ships were better, but we really like the larger ones now. Um, Kathy was just in Europe on the Koningsdam and loved that. She went with two of her girlfriends. Uh, but for the two of us, uh, we are probably the solstice would be our, our top line you know, overall. Uh, there's certainly advantages to some of the small ships as well, like the Amsterdam, um, which for other reasons we're a big fan of. But the, the smaller ships have um, a cozier personality, which uh, can be really nice. You know, some people are overwhelmed by, well, a lot of things about the big ships and aren't interested in a, a lot of the, you know, like rock climbing walls and that kind of stuff that the really big ships have and glass blowing demonstrations and on and on. So the small ships can be great to that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, it, it's interesting because I, the thing I like about small ships is, is that Sometimes they'll get into ports that a big ship won't, and if they, if you're tendering, you know, or it's a busy port, uh, the fewer passengers are getting off at one time makes that yeah. piece of it a little easier. I do yeah. like uh, on some of the bigger ships, I like the amenities. Yeah, yeah see, you know, the, the rock climbing wall on the, um, on, on the Millennium, I believe it was, was, was awesome. <laughs> you're up there uh, 10 decks anyway, and then you climb another 80 feet up there. <laughs> Yeah. I, I had my dad on that one. He thought I'd lost my mind. You're going to do what? You're 64 years old. You can't do that. Sorry, I, <laughs> yeah. Sure, I can. Hold That's my beer. Right. Yes. <laughs> so um, uh, you said you like the, the Amsterdam for reasons. 
um, in the celebrity of the millennium, what, what, what is it about the millennium that, that makes it something that suits you? Uh, the <clears throat> uh, entertainment venues and the dining as well on the millennium are, are wonderful. And the solstice perhaps even knocks that up a notch, but the millennium was, was wonderful for that. Uh, we, uh, as we change ships, we quite often uh, have a, a new favorite each time we do that. Partially because we, you know, we change uh, our ideas a little bit of what we want, do some more research, and then say, "Oh, we should try the the solstice uh, this time." And ten days on it was amazing. And I think the the longer the cruise as well, the uh, the bigger ship works out uh, better for some people because you've got more time to explore it and really get into the details of it. Seven days is it is pretty tight when you start doing ports in every day. There's not a whole lot of time to explore the ship. So that too can be an advantage for the smaller ships like the Amsterdam, for example. Uh, the Nordam uh, was a beautiful ship to sail on. Uh, we, we thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, that too, the, uh, the entertainment venues were part of that. Uh, a lot of people say, well, Hall in America, they, uh, you know, they're designed for <laughs> like 80 year olds and uh, all the entertainment is, is aimed that way. But we didn't find it that way. And I mean, my wife, uh, uh, you know, is a whole lot younger than I am. And she didn't find that it was all old stuffy people. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, and it's interesting in the Caribbean, I like bigger ships. Um, because you have more more time at sea, and um, if you're not getting off, we said in port every day. There's a lot of things to do. Uh, we've been, you know, and we've been an NCL fans, let's say, because they were the first ones that had freestyle dining, and we liked the concept of, of being able to eat where we wanted to, when we wanted to. But it was interesting. We just sailed on MSC um, in March. In fact came back from MSC, went from there from there to Disney World where I gave a speech. And then it was, we went into self-quarantine and we've been in self-quarantine since the middle of March, <laughs> which is nuts. But um, so there were, they had a, the thing that I guess my favorite venue on the, on, on the breakaway was they had a, um, a place called Sid Norman's Poor House and they had a, let's call it a, a We'll call them oldies now, but uh, for me, it wasn't oldies at the time. You know, it was music from the 70s and 80s, and they just tore it up, and it was such a great band. and so it, it was a small venue, and, the, and they're out there singing in the middle of the audience, you know, and yeah. it was it was just – it was one of those things I really liked. The Jewel, which uh, was what we sailed on to Alaska last year, had – you know, it had some nice music venues, and the shows were good but it didn't have a place that we really fell in love with like Sid Norman's on the, on that we did on the breakaway. Hmm. Um, so what about Royal Caribbean? Cause you said you sailed on a couple of their ships. What was, what, how did you feel about them in Alaska? Sorry, which ones? Didn't you say you'd sailed on some of Royal Caribbean's ships? Uh, the, the radius was our first ship. And then uh, we also sailed on, um, hmm. Now I've forgotten. Now the next one after the Radiance was. Hmm, it's gone now. That's awful. Um, anyway, the, it was a, a, a downscale. It was a, a much older ship than the Radiance. It's not even sailing anymore. Uh, but the the Radiance was was literally built for Alaska uh, with huge windows and just a really comfortable place to view Alaska from. Uh, the uh, the the Coral Princess is the other way around. Um, I didn't enjoy the Coral. It, it was a, a great ship, except that I guess the designers decided that blue plexiglass all around the ship would make sense. But for anybody who wants to take pictures, you don't want to be shooting through blue plexiglass. Yeah. <laughs> so that was my bug about the Coral. Ah, oh, you know, don't be so fussy. Well, you know, I can be fussy because there's a whole lot of ships sailing up through Alaska. You can you can uh, start picking and choosing down to those fine details. I don't want blue plexi on my ship. <laughs> well, yeah, I, uh, uh, I I guess it was on MSC that I was taking it through the you know the gaps in the panels, but it's still yeah. kind of limited. You know, you know, yeah. You're like, okay, how am I going to make this work and get what I want to see? But um, uh, so. So let's again. My my experience is kind of limited. What's your thoughts on if uh, food? Um, anything that stuck out as special to you on on any of the lines? Well, uh, while while we're on, on this 
question of food, uh, one of the things that Kathy and I really enjoy is having breakfast on our veranda while we're in port in the morning. It is awesome. You know, that's one of those things where people say, well, why do you want a veranda? So we can have breakfast on our veranda as we're looking at the port. It is just so amazing. So we, we do that a lot. But we also spend a lot of time in the specialty restaurants with the one you pay a surcharge for because you do get what you pay for. Uh, every one of them has been an amazing experience. So I, I highly recommend the uh, the extra charge restaurants. A lot of people object to the concept. We're supposed to be uh, everything included, which it is, but you can upscale that as well. Yeah, I, you know, and, and it's funny. Um, I, I am a fan of a lot of the specialty restaurants. Uh, in fact, um, I had this one lined up with all the all the bells and whistles I could get. Because I got a really good deal on it, and so we'll have to see what happens for next year. But one of the things that that amazes me, and you know, just talking about cruise ships in general, is how much traffic the buffet gets, and I don't understand the why of that. Um, on the Jewel, for example, we would go to the buffet for breakfast because they had multiple omelet stations, and it was quick and easy to specify what you wanted in your omelet, more so than in the dining room. But other than that. You know, I'm not a buffet guy. I'm not going to the buffet for lunch. In fact, when we, when we board the ship, my first routine, my ritual, is we get rid of our luggage wherever they store it, and then we go to the main dining room for that first lunch on board. And that, to me, just sets the tone. For yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the formal dining room as well. <clears throat> but And Kathy, actually, on the Koningsdam uh, last year, um, <clears throat> excuse me, spent a lot of time in the buffet. Uh, they took most of the meals in the buffet. It just worked out well for them. But when she and I are together, we prefer to, you know, go in the dining room and, uh, you know, meet different people each night when we sit with them. And it was great that way. Yeah, and that was actually what started me with MSC. Was that we really enjoyed, we had some people we met and we had a good time eating with them on the ship. Uh, we had kind of gotten spoiled to the table for two by the window routine. You know, and, and yeah. you know, I like sitting right by the window and you've got the world sliding by outside. We had, it's, it's funny, we had a balcony, you know, or a veranda uh, on the Jewel. Um, that's a whole nother story. But we didn't, we didn't eat on it. Uh, part of it was because we had our granddaughter, so it was three of us in a room that made it really tight. So there wasn't much space and it was a little, it was a very little uh, veranda. But yeah, it was a we had a great time. Very nice, uh, very nice ship. Uh, I like I said I think that to me, you know, and, and again, this is a very much a personal preference. And what I would say for everybody out there that's listening or that's watching on the replay, first of all, I'll beg for subscriptions. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Uh, and yeah, I like it when you hit the like button. It makes me feel good, and, and it makes Murray feel good too, even if he doesn't admit it. But he, Murray is a legend, by the way. <laughs> well, I got my, my wife just rolled her eyes. Oh no, you can't get hats to fit already. <laughs> but um, and, and while we're on that subject, just real briefly, I, I would say in the description below is my contact information. Murray's contact information is down there. If you ever go to Skagway and you want to drive into the Yukon Territory, Murray has written the definitive guide, the uh, uh, Murray's Guide to the South Klondike Highway. It's amazing. I, I ordered it the first time I went. I ordered it the last time I went, which was uh, in June last year. Um, it just gives you so much information about what you'll see, and there's a, so much to see up there too. Um, also, he's got a great blog. Uh, what's it's the links down below? What was the name of it? Explore North blog. Explore North blog. So if you Explore if you're North interested blog. in yeah, if you're interested in um, like I said, the links in the description. If you're interested in Alaska and uh, in the Yukon and, and that part of the world, you should follow his blog. He has some amazing pictures. Um, but what I was going to say, and go back to where I was trying to head it with that, is that for it's, it's I guess it's a, a preference case. My choice is typically going to be made based on itinerary rather than ship, because I have specific things that I want to see. And I do a lot of research and a lot of research. That's how I found Murray's Guide the first time. What I would say is, is that some people, it's the ship is the experience. And then, you know, you pick the ship and, and go where the ship goes. Uh, for me, like I said, I 
this Holland America 14 day or either one of those two princess ones or the, the nine day on the sun. Any of those would be a good suitable cruise for us next time because I'd love to be able to, um, uh, you know, to, to see Sitka. That's my, my big thing. And I've never been to Glacier Bay, so I want to go. Any, any final thoughts uh, for the for our audience, Murray? On um, uh, my, my main thing is I want to uh, tell people that uh, there's a lot of information out here. Uh, you know, once you get onto the various forums and so on, uh, take advantage of it, and and don't take people who try to nail you down very seriously. You know, some people will say, "Well, you got to go to Glacier Bay. Uh, the ship is more important than the itinerary, or vice versa, and on and on and on." You, you've got to do a round trip and so on. Take the information, decide what it is that's important to you. Uh, check out the port times; uh, that can be a big thing. Uh, there are actually a couple of cruises that spend all day in Victoria, for example. But port times can be really uh, important if you've got a plan for Juno, but you're only going to be there from 2.30 p.m. until 9, it may not work for you. So pay attention to that sort of details as well. Uh, that can make a huge difference in the overall experience. And say, hey, every ship has its own personality. Start looking at the details. Look through the deck plans. Uh, decide what's important to you. Do you want an ocean view and, and so on? You know, decide that sort of thing as well. And there's all kinds of people out here, you know, to give you information, get, give you some feedback. Yeah, and I would say it's kind of interesting that, that you hear a lot of people say you've got to have a, a balcony in Alaska. And I've done Alaska in an inside. I've done Alaska in uh, with a balcony. Last year we would have stayed in an inside cab, and if if the price hasn't dropped so much that they actually paid me to take a balcony, I got. $21 net back in my account after we did all the, this the porcelain trading on the deal. So, um, and I would say that if I was going to pay for a balcony, I would pay for a balcony in Alaska. But I would not trade off shore excursions for a balcony because, you know, everybody has a debate about port side, starboard side. If you're up on deck, it doesn't matter because you can see, you can get to both sides real quick and easy. So, you miss some of either scenery if you're in your on your on your balcony. Um, like I said, though, there is always something to look at. So I, to me, um, like I said again, I, I my pocket controls a lot of what I spend, and my money typically is going to go to what I'm going to do in port. And I will throw in one quick caveat and let Marie comment on this too. My recommendation is to book direct with the the tour operators in the port. Uh, you pay so much more for the same excursion. Um, and in fact, uh, in recent history, I've only paid for one excursion on a ship, and that was because my granddaughter picked something in Ketchikan that we couldn't get any other way. It was, uh, you know, it, just, it was sold out every other way you could buy it. But other than that, um, the, you just you get a better experience. You get better choices. Uh, i got to tell this quick story. When we were on the Spirit, it was their first sailing in the U.S. They had to go out to sea to dump gray water. They couldn't dump it in inside because they didn't have the certifications they needed. So we were late into Juno. Now, we had gone through the cruise critic, you know, read everything we could read, and we had booked our, sh our whale watching excursion independent. We pull in. We were about two hours late. They canceled the ship's whale watching. We called the company. They said, we got a car downstairs. You know, it's sitting right there beside the dock. Get off, get in the car. Uh, we've, got, we've got one of our big boat is out. It's already found them. We've got a fast boat. We'll get you out. You get to see whales today. And that is a perfect example of why booking direct pays off. Uh, it's financially better. And everybody is worried about missing it. These guys know and they make their living supporting people that, you know, are off of people that take cruises. So they know when you have to be back. You know, the people that miss the ship aren't people that typically are on tours. They're people that were in the bar or in the store. Yeah. Your thoughts, Gary? Yeah, they, absolutely. When you see the, the runners heading down the dock towards the ship, you know, three minutes after they're supposed to be left, they've always got that red bag from the discount T-shirt shop. It's, it, you know, it, it's always the case. <laughs> yeah, this is mean, absolutely yeah, part of the deal. Part of the deal with the, the booking independently, though, is you've also almost always got smaller groups. Uh, whale watching is yeah. a good example of that. Instead of being on a boat with 100 people, you're on a boat with five people, typically. And it's just a better experience all the way around. 
Uh, we've only ever in 13 cruises booked one excursion uh, through the cruise line and it, because no one else offered it and it was an amazing excursion, but we just don't do it. Yeah, that's, that's the way we are. Um, we just don't. It's, there's just too many other options. Too much fun to do it yourself. Plus, I, I'm a fan of the research. I, I, I yeah. spend hours and hours looking at it. Uh, yeah, Kathy and I spend a lot of time. Uh, we uh, have a, an excursion to Antarctica, a cruise to Antarctica book for December, which uh, the odds of it happening now are about zero. But we have, I don't know, 300 hours of research into that one. So at this point, we don't know what we're going to do. Uh, we fully expect that Hall of America is going to cancel it, but we'll see. Yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting because, uh, you know, the the way things are going with the, with the virus in the U.S. right now, it's uh, oh. I don't see things starting yeah. anytime soon. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, everybody's fussing about wanting to go, but I'm like, uh, most countries, if you had to go through Florida to get on the ship, you know, they're not going to want you. <laughs> You're going to be persona non grata there. That's a bad experience with NCL from Marvin. Yeah, I see that, Marvin. And that is um, that is such a sad situation because we've cruised, uh, we've got 11 cruises on NCL, and we've never had a, a bit of a problem. Um you know, I, I am sorry to hear that, and and I understand not making that decision not to cruise with them again. I had somebody um, was on a show, it wasn't NCL, but I'm trying to think, it might have been MSC. But anyway, uh, he checked the, his wheelchair. He didn't need his wheelchair. He checked it at the port. It didn't, you know, when he was checking in, didn't make it on the ship, and um, never found it, and. Of course, the port says it's not their fault. They gave it to the cruise line. The cruise line says, no, we never got it, and on and on and on. And I would uh, – that's one of those things that I would not let out of my possession. I would yeah. keep a hand on it. But I am so sorry for your, your situation there. Um, but, yeah. yeah, for those of you who have been on uh, – well, it doesn't matter what, what cruise line. Have, have a look around and see what the other options are. You might be surprised at at what's available, both the itinerary and the personality of the ships. Yeah, I am. I'm looking forward to. We have a. I have a free cruise on Princess. Um, assuming that we ever get cruising going again, and I am looking we, forward to that. I'm not. Sure, it is kind of funny because I, I I did went to their school for to be a travel as a travel agent, and so if you graduate, uh, you know the the upper level then you, you get a, a graduation cruise. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm not sure where. I, I almost went last year, um, uh, Panama Canal. Um, that was one of the options. And so we'll see what happens. I, um, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to taking, but it could be that 12-day Alaska cruise too. That would be, that, be sweet. Um, Anyway, I appreciate everybody that's been here and watched this evening. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you're watching on the replay, again, do me a favor. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Let me know where you're watching from because we will very definitely um, be monitoring it. I'll get answers. If I don't know the answer, Murray will know everything, so I'll get a hold of Murray. And uh, uh, Listen, I appreciate it. Uh, we'll see everybody next week on Monday night. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for coming by all.